My name is Vara with Shy Battery Systems and today we're going to show you how to install your original quart battery upgrade into your pint. So for us, it's very easy to have a, it makes it a lot easier to have a drill on hand. Um, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, any sort of uh, utility blade is very helpful. Um, some cutting pliers are very helpful as well, flush snips or anything like that. Um, and then you have an assorted number of bits, which we will link in our uh, description. The first step is you're going to grab the T20 bit and um, insert it into your drill. And we're gonna wanna remove these two screws, making sure to keep track of where you put them and what they're for. So we have two there. The next is to take out one, two, three, four screws using, using the same bit. Now these are long, so you want to make sure you do not lose track of them. Now notice those are what holds the foot pad on, so your foot pad will drop. So what I like to do is take all of the screws related to the foot pad and leave them on the foot pad. We have two screws here which are kind of hard to remove. You can pop them out from the bottom, put them on your foot pad. And then this bumper is where there are inserts that uh, go into the rail here. So sometimes you need a, a screwdriver. That's why we have the flathead screwdriver here. And you can pry this, being careful not to mark your plastic bumpers or scratch your rails. And then you can kind of shimmy it out like that. We'll put all those related parts together. Now we'll flip it back over and notice we have one, two, three, four screws now all exposed and they're all the same size. So there's no way to mix them up. We're going to back those out using the same T20 bit. We'll put those to the side and now our battery housing is loose from the rails. Find the part of the board where the wires um, go from the control box to the housing box. And once you identify that, that side of the board, you wanna remove these two big screws here. And we're gonna do that with this T30 bit. So go ahead and put that in the truck. And then these might be a little tight. These ones are not. So they will come out as long as you're in reverse and you have the right bit. Now you have two bolts right there. Put those off to the side. On that same side, you have a plastic wire holder. You just need a Phillips screwdriver and you can back these two screws out. And now what you're left with is a battery housing a loose wiring harness, and a loose rail. So this is a shortcut that I like to do, is you can kind of uh, wiggle the battery, the battery housing out like that. And then it'll just drop down. We'll flip it, flip the battery housing so we can have the ex uh, exposed heads here. Now to remove the battery and to get access to what we need to work on, we're going to grab our security bit, which is the 20 IPR bit. And we're gonna remove all of these bolts here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So after you flip your housing background, after removing the screws, you can remove your lid and put that to the side. Now there's gonna be an O-ring in this channel, which is actually what makes the uh, pint housing waterproof. Um, so you can remove that or keep it where it's at. Uh, we just wanna make sure not to cut it or get it dirty. 
If we get it dirty, you could have water ingress issues. And you can usually do these by hand because they're just in plastic. So you remove these two screws here and you can take that whole cover and put it right to the side there. The next step is very important. You wanna be sure to remove your battery in the correct order. So the first thing we wanna do is actually remove this balance connector. So the way we do that is to press down on that clip and pull the connector straight out. Very easy. The second thing we want to do is to remove the main power uh, XT60 connector that comes from the battery. And the way we do this is we just pull it straight back. And then your battery can lift right out of the housing. We need to make some modifications. So this panel here and this panel here will need to be removed as well as this panel up until this ridge here. And you'll notice it on yours. It might be hard for you to see on my housing, but there's a ridge right there. We're gonna wanna remove from this point down flush, this panel and this panel. And I'll go ahead and do that now. After modifying the housing, it should just look something like this. So all of this panel is removed all the way down to here. And then this front panel is removed all the way up until the structural ridge. After you've done that, the port battery will pop right in place. You just wanna make sure that all these wires are pushed all the way to the side so they're not under the battery adding any sort of height. So that battery fits right in place. And now we need to plug everything back up. So you wanna make sure that the positive is down, just like this connector is, and the negative, the black wire is up. If you do, it will let you do it the wrong way, um, slightly enough to damage the BMS. So you wanna be sure that you're not doing that. So we're gonna plug that in like so, perfect. The second step is to plug the balance connector in. Once you have both of those connectors in, your board is almost there. All you need to do is modify the BMS cover. So to do this, you just need to take a set of uh, cutting pliers and remove a slight corner here. You can um, sort of self adjust and see how much you need to remove until it fits without any problems. And you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the balance connector. So you have two bulges here. You're gonna wanna remove the larger one. And if you need to remove a little bit more to have the connector fit, then that's perfectly fine. But I found that that bottom bulge is all you're gonna need to remove. Now that can sit right in place there. You have to be very careful for these screws not to fall onto the BMS board and uh, short anything out. Now you can put these in hand tighten. You don't wanna go too tight or you will strip. You're ready to reinstall your lid. You just wanna be sure that the O-ring here is perfectly seated. So you're gonna take this part here and put it where their bulge is for the BMS cover and it should sit perfectly straight like so. And I, what I like to do is kind of hold it with my hand there to make sure that it's not gonna, um, the O-ring's not gonna fall out. And one of our screws here. You'll know this housing is installed correctly if you see no gaps along the edge of the aluminum and the plastic housing. And I see no gaps here, so it's, you wanna make sure you don't have any unnecessary twists in the harness. And we're gonna go ahead and start reinstalling this. So the best way I find to do it is to insert a section of it and then pull the rail up until the housing sits in between. One pain point that people struggle with a lot is once they stretch their rail a little bit, their axle doesn't reinsert correctly. And that's all because there is just a, a, a spacer in the way. So the way to remedy that is really just kind of move the spacer around until the rail closes back up again. And we're gonna go back to our T20. And we're gonna start with these four screws that hold the housing in place to the rails. This is using a medium torque. We don't want to go so much as to strip that soft aluminum out. 
can go and reinstall our axle screws, like so. So we'll start these off by hand to make sure they don't strip anything out. Next, we're gonna move on to the harness protector, the cable protector. Now this has two steps. It screws in, but it also uh, clips in slightly. So it can be a bit difficult to insert. Looks like this one is in. And we're gonna go ahead and take the Phillips and screw these in. We don't wanna go too much or you will strip the screws, the screw heads or strip the plastic receiving threads. What we need to do is reinstall the bumper. Now, if you remember from the beginning, this bumper not only gets screwed in, but it has these plastic inserts that need to go into the rail. So I want to make sure we line those up. It only works if you do it straight. And then just a good, good blow, insert it. You don't want any seam there or else none of your screws are gonna line up. We'll grab our foot pad. And we can put our two small screws using the T20 bit. And you really only want a medium torque with these. You don't want to strip anything out. Okay, so now the foot pad is installed on the top. We need to go to the bottom, put, drop our two long screws in, our two small screws that go to the other side of the foot pad, and we can secure those using medium torque. And then that's, that's all you really need. If you had a fender, you can go ahead and install that now or a fender delete. You essentially wanna leave this to charge, even though the app uh, says it's at 100%, for example, you wanna leave it to charge until the charger light actually goes green itself. Um, you wouldn't wanna ride it while uh, in the current state because batteries legally have to ship um, under 30% charge. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to leave it and then that will kind of fix the system. If you want to uh, track your range, all you need to do is uh, find the voltage chart in the sales page images and compare that voltage chart to the voltage in board settings.